good morning to all and thanks for joining uh, this exclusive webinar on pondography the speaker for today is uh, dr anandi jagaratan she has done a dds in california and she has also taken a two year orthodontic program and she is also into teaching in progressive orthodontics she has taken a lot of seminars for the past 15 years and she has also taken a three year implant course and she is passionate to do surgeries and she has also taken a three year occlusion and tnj course uh, to be corrected with the uh, orthodontic team so with this uh, illustrious profile i welcome dr anandi to our webinar and i uh, request all the participants to mute their uh, speakers microphones so that uh, we'll have a smooth contact of the same over to you dr anandi. thank you dr manohar um for those kind kind words that you just told about me uh, i'm just a general dentist uh, uh, over here not prosthodontist like all of you guys but uh, thank you for coming and listening to me uh, because dr manohar when he told me uh, can you do a condylography lecture i was like um i really don't know uh, because uh, um, when i teach something i want them to really go and practice it the next day in the clinic and uh, with the condylography i don't know how many people can go and implement whatever i'm saying today and uh, do it right away in your clinic so uh, i was thinking like couple times but he's like oh it's like an introductory topic uh, you can just say what you do uh even if they are not going to do it right away it's still okay that's what dr mano had told me so i was like okay then i'm okay to do it <laughs> right uh, so wonderful so uh, i want to first start a little bit about um the technique that i do uh is uh, let me share the screen so everybody can see first So okay, um, so this technique that I do is uh, from. Let me talk about Dr. Slavicek. He's uh, based in Vienna, and uh, he's a professor who uh, started uh, some occlusal principles. I first want to talk about his occlusal principles before I go into condylograph, just like a couple of minutes. I know you all know a lot about occlusion than me, uh, but still I want you to listen for like a couple of minutes because I, I will put everything together that way. Uh, so you will know what Dr. Slavicek talked about. And um, then uh, I do a lot of orthodontics combined with the occlusion technique from Dr. Slavicek and the orthodontic techniques is from Dr. Sadao Sato. Um, so we use multi-loop edge-wise arch wires. We bend our own wires to uh, give the occlusion the patient needs. So I, the concept of occlusion is from Slavicek, but how to get there is through Dr. Sato. That's what I practice. Um, so if you see, this is how it started with, uh, you know, like McCullum. He uh, started having a natoscope. Um, that was in 19, early 1920s, and uh, then we, we talked about terminal hinge access. And uh, then came Everett Payne and then centric occlusion, and uh, we talked about organic occlusion. Everybody knows what's an organic balance occlusion, organic occlusion. Excuse terminal. me, doctor, can we have full screen presentation, please? Ah, yes, thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Dr. Chetan, sir. Thank you, Dr. Manan. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, so I'm not going to go too much into what is balanced occlusion, organic occlusion, because everybody over here already knows about that. So um, we, according to Dr. Rudolf Slavicek, we do something called sequential occlusion. Sequential occlusion is uh, canine dominated, but uh, we have still premolar. Uh, guidance and then 
the measles cusp of measles cusp of the first molar still guides. So it's like a group function, but with canine domination is what Dr. Slavicek talks about. And for us, we use a computerized axiograph, which we call it as condylograph. It's nothing but a machine which measures um, the mandibular jaw movements during function is what we are talking about. And then we mount it on an articulator. Um, after we do the axiograph, we get the tracings and then the upper phase bow is uh, a functional phase bow um, that we use it to mount it on an articulator and then we can treatment plan looking at the articulator. So that's what um, Dr. Slavichak talked about, right? And I talked about these. Uh, so his concept of occlusion first is number one. He talks about posterior support. I will go into detail a little bit on different slides. I just want to tell you what I'm going to talk about first in this slide. And then he talks about guidance system related to joint inclination. Guidance system is the, uh, how is the lingual concavity of the upper anterior teeth and how is it related to the joint inclination and how are the canine inclination related to the joint inclination. That's what that, that means and then occlusal plane inclination depending on the joint inclination. So we uh, look at the joint inclination compared to the occlusal plane inclination. And then how is the joint position? Uh, whether the patient has internal derangement or how is it, is it loaded, is it compressed, is it distracted? And then we come up with a therapeutic uh, reference position to treatment plan, diagnose and treatment plan. So these are the things that Dr. Slavicek talks about. Um, so the concept of organic occ occlusion, like we talked about, the anterior teeth is for um, guidance and the posterior teeth is for support and the premolars, they take it both, um, both guidance and uh, support. So what is posterior support, right? We talked about the first thing we talked about is posterior support. So you can see this, the inside, um, we when we see the outside of the teeth, we talk about aesthetic side, that's a chocolate side. Usually that side looks much better, but on the inside, the lingual side, when you see it, you can see that it has to have proper function with a cusp and fossa. It has to really slide inside, right? So that's what he, you can see in the slide, how uh, they all are at the right um, with good posterior support. This is a slide with good posterior support. So you can see this is the chocolate side I was talking about. So this patient has overload of anterior teeth. She has sensitivity, she has headaches. She's only 42, right? She's a female patient. But you see the occlusion looks very nice from the chocolate side. When we smile, it looks very nice. There's class one occlusion everywhere. The bite seems to be very good, you know, but um, this is from the uh, inside, you can see uh, on the inside, there's no posterior support. Only the buccal um, lower teeth are touching the upper teeth. There is no posterior support at the back of the teeth on the inside. So this is the in ICP. ICP is intercuspal position. And RP in our language, I mean, you know, with prosthetics, every country, every, every area has their own linguistics. So RP means reference position. Reference position is same as CR, right? Centric relation. So this is in centric relation. And then this one is in ICP position. Even ICP position, you can see there is no posterior support, right? So the posterior support and intercoronal freedom have, they go hand in hand. So you can see the posterior support is with all the three points, the fossa and the valley, they have to be on top of each other. And there's a curve of Wilson with the intercoronal freedom should be there for the mandible to move um, side to side or forward. So we talked about posterior support. The next we're gonna talk about guidance system related to joint inclination. So that one, um, why we do the condylograph, right? Condylograph, uh, why we do is we get the sagittal condylar inclination with the sagittal condylar inclination. Um, does someone have a question or something? I heard a beep. No, no, you can go ahead. I think it's a technical, yeah. Okay. So um, with the 
sagittal condylar inclination, we can figure out where the upper anterior teeth has to stay. We look at the lingual concavity of the upper anterior teeth. So if you see that, that's the lingual concavity of the upper anterior teeth. So F1 is a start position of function, F2, and the deepest the concavity is the F3. So we look at this concavity, how it is, uh, that inclination should be um, not steeper than 60 degrees, and the average inclination is 50 to 60 degrees. And if the sagittal condylar inclination is steeper, then this will also be steeper. If the sagittal condylar inclination is flat, then this also will make it flat. So we talk about canine do dominated sequential occlusion. That's what I was talking about. So canine is the primary uh, domination in the occlusion. And still um, on lateral trusion, you will see the premolars, there will be F1, F2 on premolars, and also the mesiobuccal cusp of the molars. This is what Dr. Stavichek talked about, right? So um, for the canine guidance, we talked about incisor guidance should be like 50 to 60 degrees, depending on the sagittal condylar inclination, right? But the con canine inclination should be the same as the sagittal condylar inclination. So canine will be the same, but incisal guidance will be 10 degrees steeper than the sagittal condylar inclination. So we talked about posterior support. We talk about guidance system. The next thing I want to talk about is that uh, this is just a, uh, I'm going fast because um, if you have questions, stop me anytime in the middle uh, because we are mainly wanting to do condylography. This is just an introduction about why I'm doing condylography, right? So if anything is, if I'm going too fast because we teach this course in three years and I'm giving a one hour webinar on this. So if it's too qu quick, just stop me and ask me questions. Um, then the occlusal plane inclination we are gonna talk about depending on the joint inclination, right? The next is the occlusal plane. Uh, the occlusal plane, according to Dr. Slavicek, we have it from uh, lower incisal edge to the distal cusp of the lower first molars. That's what we look at as for the occlusal plane, right? So um, if you see, the, we look at the axial orbital plane to the occlusal plane, which has to be 12 degrees. That's, that's the average normal value of the, uh, from the axial orbital plane. Axial orbital plane is from the axis, you know, axis to the orbital plane is what we're talking about. So, and it also is dependent on the joint inclination how we have a formula for this. I'm not gonna go too deep into the formula, how to get the occlusal plane. We have a formula to calculate um, the, from the axial orbit, from the sagittal condylar inclination to the axial orbital plane to get the, um, to where we need to be. Basically, if the angle is steep, the occlusal plane also will be steep. If the angle is flat, the occlusal plane also will be flat, but we have a calculation of how, how much angle, how we can get it. We have a formula for that. So the next thing we talk about is the vertical dimension because vertical dimension is of course a very important, right? So um, according to Slavicek, so it's again an individual value, but this doesn't have to be really doing with the sagittal condylar inclination, but I just wanted to show you that I include that also when I do diagnosis and treatment plan. This is basically, a uh, small gist of uh, occlusion on Slavicek, yeah? So we talked about posterior support, about guidance system related to joint inclination, which is the uh, upper anterior incisor, the lingual concavity, and the concavity of the canine, right? And then occlusal plane inclination and joint position in unloaded uh, reference position is nothing but um, centric relation, yeah? So, I will talk a little bit about TRP in the next slide. So reference position is nothing but the centric relation like we talked about. That is like uh, when the mandible is in the most unloaded position. Unloaded position is it's not compressed or distracted. It is in um, stable position. Um, that's what we talk about, yeah. So reference position, uh, we do the diagnostics to see at, from the reference position or from the CR, we do the diagnostics. When we do the diagnostics, we evaluate to see how is the jaw. If the jaw has 
internal derangement or there's a partial lock or there's a closed lock, whatever um, you know, uh, they have. Um, if they are normal, then it's a physiological reference position. From that, we go to definitive therapy. We start orthodontics, because I do mainly for orthodontics, I start orthodontics without doing any uh, initial therapy. Um, after doing diagnostics, if they have a deranged uh, CR, uh, deranged meaning there is some type of uh, internal derangement uh, with a disc or, uh, you know, um, with the eminence or, you know, some osteoarthritic changes in the jaw, then we do uh, something called therapeutic reference position. Therapeutic reference position is like we first figure out where is the jaw in the unloaded position without patient, patient having pain or symptoms or um, because if we strongly believe that Hello, is there a problem? Uh, can you hear me? I think yeah, someone... it, yeah it got cut. So, okay. is there a problem? Me? Yeah, I can hear you very well. Okay. You can because tell. Because it was muted, yeah. it, my screen said it was muted. So, just, uh, you know, I uh, want to make sure. So, uh, like we talked about, therapeutic reference position is uh, when there is some type of internal derangement we put the jaw in a position where uh, the patient is pain-free and uh, gets uh, asymptom, uh, asymptomatic with the temporomandibular joint. So uh, when, when, we, um, when we do that, uh, the patient feels better. Like initially we do like a splint or some, um, some type of splint, relaxation splint to calm. And then we start the initial therapy. After the initial therapy, we do the definitive therapy. Yeah, so we do the diagnostics. Diagnostics uh, um, meaning like one of them is the condylograph. <laughs> so what is condylograph, right? Um, condyla that is the topic we talked about, we are going to talk about today is the condylograph, right? So what is condylograph? Condylograph is nothing but a device which measures uh, or um, how the jaw is, yeah? It's like, how is the, what are the um, movements of the jaw in a functional position is what we're talking about. Uh, there's, they used to call it an axiograph, but I think with the patency and they have having some problems, so they changed their name to condylograph instead of an axiograph. Uh, because it was from the terminal hinge axis, they came with the name as axiograph. Uh, but with the, because of the patency, then this company changed the name to Condylograph. So it consists of uh, upper face bow, a lower face bow. You can see the upper face bow, and then the lower face bow, uh, which has a clutch which is attached to the lower teeth. So the, only the lower teeth moves around, right? So it is attached to the lower teeth, um, and then there's a stylus with a place where you can use the graph. It's a, so you can see the stylus and we have a graph here so we can record the tracings. This is how we used to do before the, con with the, before the computer um, tracings are recorded. This is how we used to do, but I still use this graph to start to get my terminal hinge axis. Without having a hinge axis, I cannot start doing the tracing. So before even I um, start my uh, uh, computer tracings, I have only the graph where I have the hinge axis and then I can start uh, with the condylar graph. So this is a... Just to show you, there's an upper face bow, there's a lower face bow and we are mounting the stylus to... So the upper face bow is attached only with the headband. Uh, it is not attached, it is not glued or anything to the head. Uh, it just stays still only with the headband and it is supported by the nose. And uh, the lower is attached with a clutch only to the lower um, anterior teeth. 
So you can see now this uh, slide has the, um, for the computer, it has the module over here. Uh, so it can be recorded in the computer. Um, the tracing is so much easier to evaluate all the three dimensions using the computer. So you can see this much better with this upper face bow. There's a lower face bow with a clutch attached. And that's the um, module for the computer. It has a, which has a stylus attached to it. After we do all the um, tracings and evaluation, we use the up, we remove the lower face bow and we use the upper face, upper face bow to um, mount in our articulator. So we have to get the um, upper bite. Uh, so we get the bite using the face bow up uh, to attach to with a bite fork and get the upper uh, bite, right? And then we mount it to an articulator. And from the articulator, we can evaluate how uh, all the recordings um, can be put in the articulator. We have a semi-adjustable articulator. We can put all the numbers in it and we can do the diagnosis and treatment planning. So for example, this patient, I didn't put the face of the patient because um, you know, for the HIPAA policy, I didn't want to show because this is not my patient. I got, because I don't do a lot of prosthetic cases, I do more ortho cases. So this is not one of my cases. So I, um, uh, I didn't put the face of the patient. So his main concern is um, he's having a lot of pain, right? Need for reconstruction. He, I mean, like he has TMJ pain, chronic headaches. He, he goes for equilibration and he like, they recommended, you know, orthognathic surgery for this patient. So, you know, and this is for the diagnostics. Uh, we get history. Anytime the patient comes, we get a history, right? So we see uh, special um, medical analysis, like basically no problems other than knee problems. And the dental history, you can see uh, he has pain, um, you know, in the joints. And then he has headaches almost like every day on the left side. That's what he says. And the dental history index is 2.75. That's a really high index, uh, occlusal index that we take for all the pain and all the things that he's going through, he's actually suffering. And um, after that, I mean, you can see his, uh, he didn't have any ortho treatment, his restorative is like, it's a big history of a lot of dental treatment uh, for him. Uh, you know, he had hygiene, he had splint therapy, he had equilibration, uh, you know, he had chronic pain everywhere and, you know, um, so, and um, then we do the muscle diagnosis. Then we do the muscle diagnosis. Participants, please hold on. I think the speaker is having some net problem. Can you hear me? She'll be back. Yeah, yeah, she's back. Yeah. Yeah, you I can... think you got uh, logged out. We lost you for a while. Okay, you can hear yeah. me now. Yeah, now we can't see the screen. You can share your screen and then proceed. Yeah, you can hear me now, Manohar? I can hear you, you can proceed. Okay. Yeah. 
So this is the intro picture. We, like we talked about, he had so many um, dental issues and, but you see how his hygiene is. He goes to hygiene every three months for his regular checkup and cleaning. So it's not the hygiene problem, right? I mean, like it doesn't, I mean, look at how his gums are nice pink and you know, it's not because he's not brushing or he's not taking care. Uh, when you look at his mouth, he's actually trying his level best to take care, you know, then why is he breaking all these stuff? Why is he losing all his teeth, you know? Um, so you can see he has a bridge. Um, he has a lot of crowns and uh, yeah, you can see he has uh, implants, uh, a lot of dental work, right? But look at his the hygiene. It's, it's not a really bad hygiene. If you ask me, it's, uh, he's really taking care. So why is he getting all these problems, right? So that's a question, yeah. So you can see how his TMJ are, you know, he has some osteoarthritic changes on both the TMJ, especially the left, you can see how, um, you know, it's kind of getting thinner and especially on the mesial, and, right? So then we mount, we do the uh, condylograph and then a hinge axis mounting to axorbital plane because we use axorbital plane for all the reference uh, that we do. So um, hinge axis mounting to axorbital plane was done. And I have a closer view of that. You can see um, clearly uh, there's a cross bite. Um, the curve of Wilson is negative. He's, it's like this. Uh, the anatomy of the tooth is basically nothing on the posterior. So there's no posterior support actually because there's no cusp uh, relation fossa. You know, Fos you can see um, there's poor posterior uh, support, yeah, on the lingual view as well, right? Poor posterior support. You can see the occlusal plane is not even. The left side is slightly higher than the right side. So then we do the condylograph. After doing the condylograph, these are the tracings that we get from the condylograph. We, uh, we look at function, right? When we do it, function meaning protrusion, retrusion, open, close, uh, um, medial tuition right, medial tuition left. Uh, we also have uh, bruxism. Uh, I, I think the slides are coming. So a, when we do protrusion, retrusion, we ask the patient to come forward, backward, and then we get whatever tracings we get. So uh, these are the tracings. So when we look at the tracing, there are like three dimensions, like we, look at it's like you know frontal view side view and sagittal view top view so we have three dimensions so that's what the graph shows the three dimensions so uh, the frontal view is the y to z yeah this is the frontal view y to z this is the frontal view when you stand in front you can see when he does protrusion retrusion he is going to the left this is the left this is the right yeah so um this is the right side and the left side of the patient. So you can see when he's doing protrusion, retrusion, coming forward and backward, he is uh, moving to the, the jaw is actually moving to the left, right? That's the frontal view. And then the top view is a Y and Z view, Y and Z. This is from the top. So when your face is like this, over here, if you put your face, this is the right and this is the left. Uh, this is the right condyle, this is the left condyle, but when you have your head over here, um, then you can see this is the right side of the patient, this is the left side of the patient. So he's moving his jaw to the left on protrusion retrusion. And this graph shows the side, side view, which is the anterior posterior view. So the anterior posterior view, you can see that uh, he's coming forward and backward. Um, it's limited. The average amount that we need for protrusion retrusion is 8 to 12 millimeters. So um, we talk about symmetric movement. So when you're doing symmetric movement, you can see this is not symmetrical, right? This is um, limited and not symmetrical. This is slightly concave and the left side is a little bit straighter. So it's not symmetrical, right versus left. Condyles are not symmetrical. That's limited movement. And we also look at uh, how is the quality of the uh, quantity. Then we look at quality. The quality is not that bad. Usually there's little tremors when you see, then we say quality of the 
movement tracing is not that great but over here i would say it's average quality and it's asymmetric that's what and we call delta y to the left delta y to the left meaning he's moving to the left on protrusion retrusion which is a symmetric movement and then open and close is also a symmetric movement when we look at it you can see open and close he's got a really long graph on the uh, ap direction you can see this graph is a long graph that means he's got more uh, over rotation of the condyle on the right side so over rotation usually rotation happens in the lower compartment uh, the condyle has two compartments right the upper compartment and the lower compartment the lower compartment where rotation happens and then the upper compartment where the translation happens the jaw actually comes out and in on the upper compartment the lower compartment the jaw only rotates yeah so over here we see over rotation of the jaw which is mainly talking about it says or oh, something is wrong with the lower compartment of the jaw rather than the upper compartment of the jaw um so even here there's a delta y to the left but he's also ending to the right so when he's moving when he's opening and closing he's actually going to the left but his jaw is trying to come to the right and finishing at the right so you can see that he's going to the left but trying to finish at the right and uh, the quantity is over in the right side the left side the quantity is okay and this is quality is not that great you can see there is a little um, disturbance there's a little disturbance so the quality of the graph is not that great so poor quality and it's asymmetric right versus left so this is what we talk about in both uh, symmetric symmetric movement is protrusion retrusion and open close yeah then we go to asymmetric movement when we go to look at asymmetric movement medial tuition right medial tuition left is uh, asymmetric movement so medial tuition right if if you see medial tuition right is moving to the the jaw is moving to the left so when the jaw is moving to the left then um, the working side is the left side and the non working side is the right side in this graph even though we say medial tuition right the working side is the left side so if you look at it this is again this graph you can see this is the um, y and z is the front view when you look at from the front he's moving his jaw to the left which is what we want we asked him to move the jaw to the left so he's moving to the left right so he's moving the jaw to the left uh, and then the quantity is okay uh, quality is not that bad and we don't look at symmetric in this because it's not a symmetric movement this is a asymmetric movement so then we talk about bennett angle and bennett movement in asymmetric movement right later later torsion has bennett angle and bennett movement um, bennett movement is on the working side bennett angle is on the non working side so bennett movement you can see over here this is bennett movement what is bennett movement is when you're doing later torsion the condyle moves away um, or inward it doesn't i mean sometimes they even move inside uh, depending on the rotation of the condyle so um, the bennett movement is on medial torsion on the working side the jaw the condyle moves um, translates basically in the rotation there is some translation so that is what is bennett movement you can see over here he has like one almost 2 mm of bennett one and a half here and uh, vertically he has some also so you would say translation is what we look at you know for bennett movement so almost like one and a half which is uh, which is not uh, the normal bennett movement is 0.3 to 0.5 in our system every system i think has its own uh, depending on uh, how they are calibrated to the machine um, our system has like 0.3 to 0.5 is the normal bennett movement we consider so this is increased bennett movement for us uh, and then the bennett angle is also increased you can see this is bennett angle right this here to here is bennett angle that is also increased so usually it is like for us 3 to 7 in our uh, computer um, but i i do not know all the other systems usually i think it's like 
8 to 15 or something like that. That's what they say. But in our computer, it's a 3 to 7. So that's the media tuition right. Then again, media tuition left, you can see um, that um, the Bennett movement is like one millimeter over here. And then I really can't see this. Okay, and then Bennett angle is like almost two millimeters over here, Bennett angle over here. I can't, angle is an is a angle, so I really can't tell with the looking at this, at this. We have a transverse condylar inclination angle and we can get it from there. Yeah, so. And then the next uh, function that we look for is speech. So how are they when they are talking, right? We have phonetics we look at um, from uh, 80 to 70, then 70 to 60, then 60 to 50. So we ask them to do three measurements. With the three measurements, we look at how are they talking the speech for him. Uh, you can see the left side comes forward when he talks, right side basically goes a little bit back, right? There's, there's a subtrusion on the right side. And um, uh, mastication you can see he favors the right side to chew more than the left side because you can see he's working his working side is the right side yeah and um, even on the free movements you can see he's favoring the uh, right side more than the left side so on bruxing what is bruxing right uh, bruxing is uh, micro movements we ask the patient to do like grinding their teeth like like Chewing is different from grinding. Grinding is for stress management. That's what we um, talk about. Uh, when they are stressed, you grind your teeth. So that's what people at night grind their teeth to release the stress. Uh, this is Dr. Sato's concept uh, of stress management. Uh, parafun it's basically not parafunctional activity anymore. He stresses and says um, that uh, grinding the teeth is essential. Uh, to release the stress that we have. So we have to give them good occlusion so they can grind their teeth. Uh, so we look at bruxism. So when we are doing bruxism, he's actually got some distraction. He's coming forward and bruxing. It's uh, basically when you brux, it's only on one side and he's got transverse bruxism too. So, so he's bruxing, he's going to the left and he's chewing mainly, he's grinding mainly on the left. So, and then we look at the um, frontal cell. So to do the diagnosis again, we get the history of the patient. We do the uh, muscle exam, we do the nerve exam, and we do the chondrograph. We are mounted in an articulator, and then we do the tracings. And then we get all the CEPH to evaluate how the CEPH is, right? So this is the frontal CEPH. You can see there is a uh, lateral deviation of the mandible to the left side, right? And you can see in this picture how the mandible is deviated to the left side. Right? And then you can see you can see on the lateral step when we take, you can see the um, how he's, it's basically a class three uh, face, right? With a concave kind of straight, but concave face uh, with the upper teeth inside and the lower teeth forward. And you can see how his occlusal plane is more compared to the axorbital plane, right? We tell, like we talked about, this is the axis and this is the orbit. So uh, from the axorbital plane to the occlusal plane, you can see it's more flat. So and we do the tracings. Uh, when we do the tracing, we get horizontal condylar inclination right and left, yeah? When we have the horizontal condylar inclination, before in the computer, they used to have the name called horizontal condylar inclination. Now they change the name to sagittal condylar inclination. They basically mean the same thing over here. So you can see the right side has a different value and the left side has a different value. Basically, all the other values uh, we can get it from tracing the cephalogram, later cephalogram. Just the um, functional measurement, you can see here, the functional measurement is the ones that we get it from the 
uh, Condé Lagraffe. So with this measurement is when we can treatment plan uh, how the incisor guidance is going to be for him, how the occlusal plane is going to be for him, right? So we get this number. So you can see that the right side condyle is 66 and then the left side condyle is 44. So the right side is steeper and the left side is more flat. So we have to make it more even, right? And then his anterior guidance is 56. Anterior guidance, how we get is we have the lingual concavity of the um, we take um, the upper incisor and get a lingual concavity using the silicone cut. Silicone is um, uh, the impression material, uh, uh, thick impression material we use uh, to get the silicone cut. And then we uh, trace it in the computer and we get the anterior guidance over here. So you can see here, the functional value. Then we have the occlus plane is minus seven. Again, like I said, this is the formula we talked. I talked about before, but it is too too much to explain the formula in just like a couple of minutes. So um, the AOD is thirty two degrees. AOD is angle of disocclusion. Angle of disocclusion meaning uh, the patient when they chew and eat will have a, it, usually it's like eight to twelve degrees. So if the angle of disocclusion is um, more, then they cannot chew. Uh, if the angle of disocclusion is less, then the patient will keep breaking things. So um, that's what we come up with. Uh, then now we have to decrease the angle of disocclusion. Uh, and that means we have to increase the occlusal plane. So if the occlusal plane is increased, then the angle of disocclusion will be increased. So they, they go reverse, right? So over here, um, mainly we have to steepen the occlusal plane and especially the uh, left side we have to steepen. The right side, uh, we, we can keep it probably as is, but we need to steepen the occlusal plane. Right. Uh, this is again more measurement from uh, the later cephalogram. And uh, this one, we look at it mainly to see that his frankfurt horizontal to mandibular plane is 20 degrees. That means he's strongly, his muscles are very strong, he's strong. Um, so we need to open up and make him bigger. So that's what we talked about vertical height, right? So the lower facial height is 40 for him. Normal is like 42, 43 is normal. So his lower facial height is less than Frankfurt horizontal the mandibular plane is 20 degrees. So um, we can actually increase the uh, lower facial height. So his low, he's low angle class three patient. So what happens is when we have Frankfurt horizontal mandibular is 20 and lower facial height 40, we increase the vertical. When you increase the vertical, the class three will become class, we open up till we get class one. So it's like from class three, you open the vertical, it will become class one, right? Or, or if it becomes class two, then we bring the mandible forward to class one. So uh, that's the way we come up with the treatment plan. And that's called a Brux Chakra. Um, we uh, just like your um, bleaching trays that you make, we make it with, this is with color and we give it to the patient. It's like occlusogram. I don't do occlusogram anymore because I make this and give it to the patient. The patient wears it at night, two days upper only, two days lower only. So after they uh, wear it and they bring it, now I can check and see where they are bruxing, where they are actually, where is the interface appearance in, in the mouth, right? So you can see the uh, upper anterior fascia has fully gone. There's so much interference right there. And then the lower anterior also, these edges are gone. So there's interference there. And then the posterior is not as much interference. They are just marks. Um, so this is a Brux chakra. And then the next is the lingual concavity I talked about. You can see how steep it is. So the anterior guidance is steep. It's like, it was close to 60 something, 57, 60 something. So it has got steep anterior um, guidance. So the problem list for him is like, he has a subjective problem is he has TMJ pain, he has headache, 
Yes, insufficient restorations and periodontal problems. Uh, dental class three and class one on the left, skeletal class three, anterior crossbite. He has a lack of posterior support because there's no tooth morphology and his occlusal plane is hanging down. A lack of chewing efficiency, right? Distraction in bruxing and osteoarthritic changes. So reference position is a deranged reference position because we saw all these points in the, uh, some of them in the condylograph, but we come up with all of these with all the diagnostics that we um, have. Yeah, so deranged, deranged meaning, then you have to get a um, therapeutic reference position. So the treatment objective is give bilateral posterior support, that is unload the joint because he's having so much pain, right? Headache, especially on the left side, that's what he was talking about. So we increase the vertical and uh, upright the occlusal plane, eliminate anterior crossbite, establish canine dominated sequential guidance. This is the treatment objective for this patient. Right, so then how are we going to achieve all these treatment objective? So we do verticalization and change of the occlusal plane. So um, we, you, like we talked about, we need to, his treatment, his flat occlusal plane, we need to steepen the occlusal plane, right? So we increase the vertical. When you increase the vertical, the occlusal plane steepens as well. So we are going to increase the vertical to correct the class three he has and to steepen the occlusal plane. How are we going to do that? We're going to do that with overlays and healing crowns. I'll show you, we have, I have pictures of what is an overlay and what is a healing crown. And then we do orthodontic treatment to eliminate the crossbite four to four. And then uh, we're going to do periodontal therapy and he, we're going to place implants on one, six and two, six because he has, he has a bridge everywhere, yeah? And then the final reconstruct reconstruction using functional occlusion to give him canine guided occlusion, sequential occlusion. So this is the TRP. TRP is therapeutic reference position, like at all, therapeutic CR, if you wanna talk about it like that. So this is a visual treatment objective that we did in the computer, all right? So we increased from the SEP that we had, we increased the lower facial height. Uh, it was like 40.7, we increased um, to 42.7. So when we increase 42.7, then the increase is five millimeter for the computer. So vertical five millimeter increases, increases the lower facial height to 42. It's not the same equal. Uh, if you increase five millimeter, it only increases the lower facial height to two millimeter, right? And then the occlusal plane, it was minus seven. And then when you bring the occlus, you're bringing the occlusal plane up to 2.3 degrees, you're going to increase it. So that's the goal for this patient and change the anterior dental relationship, change the incisor guidance, yeah? So this is when we started. You can see, uh, remove the old bridge and all the crown, crown work he had. And then we mount it in our articulator. We do the face bow mount. We mount it in the articulator. And then um, the, this is the provisional crowns that was given to him on the upper. They did a provisional bridge and overlays are this. Overlays are, I'm sorry. Overlays are these uh, gold on, it's like an onlay, but it's overlay because you're going to overlay on top of the, crowns that he, implant crowns that he already has. So it will be cemented on top of the crowns that he already has. So overlays were done by changing the occlusal plane to 2.3 instead of minus seven, which was there, we increased it to 2.3. So this is how he ended up after cementing the new provisional uh, bridge and then uh, with the overlays on top. Right. And after that, he went through um, orthodontic treatment. Yeah. Uh, so this is the multi-loop arch wire that I talked about. We bend our own wires. This is the multi-loop arch wire I talked about. We do that. And then you know, uh, the final was done after treatment. Um, we do, we again mounted, we uh, did the wax up for him. 
they did crowns on the posteriors and the front four teeth were um, veneers. Was done. That's the. Yeah. Final crown and bridge. And um, he wanted to keep the same space that he had in the front because he said that was there throughout his life and uh, he didn't want to change that space. So they left the space because um, he wanted to keep it. So you can see how um, he has nice uh, valleys and fossa, right? Good uh, occlusion, right, left, for front. And you can see this is the before and after. You can see how he was really, how his muscles are much more pleasant now from before to after. Okay. And um, in the, even in the cephalometrics, you can see uh, like before and after, see the occlusal plane change. Uh, it was flat before, now uh, we change the occlusal plane. And you can see how the anterior is um, good guidance. And that's the radiograph. Uh, it still doesn't show the change in the condyle yet, but the condyles are very, very adaptive. Uh, so when you put the jaw in the right position, the condyle actually has seen like very thin, narrow condyles actually grow into um, really uh, good shape condyles. So if you give them the right environment, the condyles actually are very adaptive and they grow back to normal, almost normal. I, I cannot say normal if they have internal derangement and stuff, but you know, almost normal um, you know, functioning condyles. So over here, I don't see too much change on the condyle, but um, he's symptom free. So that's what matters, right? This is um, before and after uh, superimposition. You can see the occlusal plane change. You can see the vertical change that we talk about. And with the follow-up, you can see that the pain factor is uh, reduced. So a lot reduced. So this is the three-year follow-up. Um, it's very stable and, you know, um, right? So uh, that's what I have for, but I wanted to show you um, how we basically do a diagnosis with the, the system. So you can see, oh, I have to do new share. Okay. Okay, so uh, this is basically how we do our full diagnosis is we ask the chief concern of the patient and we have, um, uh, you know, history from the patient, whatever the patient wants to say about, you know, dental, what she had before. And then we have the clinical analysis, like initial diagnostics. Uh, this is again, the history of the patient. We have the dental history, asking her about the pain and, you know, um, how she is. And then we have the muscle diagnosis. Uh, muscle diagnosis is like, a, it tells you a lot about, uh, you know, coming, like you ask a patient for like, you know, if they have, um, when they, they can't sleep at night and come for endo, right? Like, like how long have you been having the pain? And, you know, you can evaluate it. Same way, the muscle diagnosis over here helps us to see, okay, where is the jaw? How is the pain? And, you know, so we, it's like a, a guide for us. And then we have the brainstem nerve analysis. Uh, we evaluate to see how the nerves on the body are um, affecting um, the, the jaw, and we take the face pictures to evaluate to see how strong, you can see her muscles are very, very strong. She's got like really um, heavy masita, uh, right? So 
So we take all these pictures, smile pictures without smile, right, left, 45 degrees. And then we have our intraoral pictures showing. It cannot move up. Okay. And then we have our x rays. Sorry. So we, we take all these intro pictures. And then we have our x-rays, we have a um, panel, we have like a TMJ shot. You can see in the panel how her TMJ is really messed up, especially left side. And then we mount it on an articulator. Again, we have the CR mounting, we have the ICP mounting. Yeah. And then we look at uh, the spheres, we look at the curve of SP, and then we look at the curve of Wilson. And then we have, this is the anterior guidance I talked about. Um, we look at uh, the front two teeth, and then I look at both the cuspids, right? We have the drawings. And once we have the drawings, we can import it in the software, and the software, I can measure, I can trace it in the software. You can see I can trace it in the software, and then this gives me the number, um, on the analysis. I don't do the occlusogram as much now because I started doing the Brux checkers. Uh, so, so again, you can see the Brux checkers. It will show you where the interferences are for the patient, all right? And then after that, we do the condylography. We get all the tracings from the condylograph. And then we uh, mounted an articulator. We have the articulator programming. And we trace our steps. Uh, we take a frontal step as well. And then we come, we do the analysis. Once we have the analysis, then we can come up with the diagnosis, treatment objective, and then the treatment planning for the patient. So the condylograph is just uh, aid in all of these stuff for us to help us to do our, our diagnosis and treatment planning. So that's not the only one that I use, but that is a major factor because, you know, without the condylograph, uh, it's hard to tell, um, you know, where I have to put the incisors, what is going to be my uh, therapeutic reference position for this patient, you know, where I have to put, what is the inclination of the cuspid, how my occlusal plane is going to be, uh, like right versus left, you know, I, so it actually guides me. Um, so without the condylograph, I cannot make a good diagnosis and treatment plan. Yeah. I think the time given to me is up. Do you guys have any questions? Are you done, Dr. Anandi? Yes, Can I am you? done. I mean, if they, I, I know it was a little bit rushed up because I had to talk about a lot of concepts in very less time, um, but I'm here to answer questions. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the lucid presentation and a lot of things we have to go and read up, I think. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> let this be a sensitization lecture. And if people are interested, we can have more programs. And uh, I feel this cannot be completed in one hour. So exactly, that's what I was talking to you about. You know, when yeah. you were asking me, it's like, you know, I really don't know how to give this within one hour. But <laughs> yeah, but uh, we had a good insight into various aspects, and it opened up many of our thought processes. So that is more important, I felt. When I was first discussing with you about this topic, you told uh, I can see the condyle and its movement and it's more predictable. So those are the words which were, you were using. So right. that is in contrast to what we do here 
we use intracrustal records which are more indirect method of uh, seeing those condyles and its motion so that's well explained and uh, thanks a lot and uh, great effort from your side for your time and uh, the floor is open for discussion any other participants would like to ask questions you are free now yeah i really can yeah, anybody yeah. maybe because i'm still sharing my uh, thing or yeah we we have enabled uh, screen share you can okay because i cannot some. i cannot see i didn't i couldn't see you i don't know whether people can see me yeah. but yeah people can see you okay i cannot see anybody here participants please uh, ask questions or you can post your questions in the chat box and uh, here uh, and dr anandi dr suma madam is here ah you know i really can't see i have to see her <laughs> madam welcome Wait, madam i cannot see any of you guys i want to see her madam are you there mano i really can't see anybody mano can you help me yeah 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 i'll ask madam to put on the video ashraf dr ashraf also is here wonderful thank you for coming <laughs> right <laughs> and many uh, many heads of the departments of various institutions senior people are here dr well Chetan. now you know what manohar you have to make your um place get a condylograph right yeah i know <laughs> <laughs> anyway i don't know whether it's a possible thing but we'll try our best well keep in your mind if nothing is impossible right if i can yeah. like a general dentist can do this uh, of course you are a prosthodontic department you should be able to have somebody help you to get it yeah 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 <laughs> any questions from the audience yeah yep there is uh... one question from dr dinesh please show the method of recording condylar movements by condylography a simplified way method he is asking uh i don't know whether you are prepared for that method meaning like he wants me to show how yeah, how the tracings are done yeah yeah so the tracing i don't know can can they see me right the tracings are done after i showed you the picture of the condylograph right let me put the picture again i will show you um so so the, the, this is a better picture so once we have this we ask the functional movements right like we talked about protrusion retrusion open close so i tell the patient uh, come forward and backward so when the patient comes forward and backward then we, tra we record the tracing we can't see the screen are you sharing another screen okay let me share can you see uh that aclosogram that that screen we are in i am on the powerpoint yeah, the no. one that i showed you before right yes so um yeah we tell the patient after i put all the uh, upper face bow lower face bow and the ear piece then we tell the patient before we do it we make the patient be on hinge axis and then i start recording right so we tell the patient come forward backward so uh, when the patient comes forward and backward it makes the tracing so those are the tracing that i showed you so come forward backward right and then we do it three times each and every tracing we do it three times to see the reproducibility of the tracing because sometimes a patient uh, may not do what you are asking the patient to do so uh, to make it uh, reproducible we do it three times come forward backward this protrusion protrusion open close is easy right like open and close uh, and then 
We do medial tuition right, medial tuition left. Medial tuition right is moving the jaw. Medial tuition right is moving the jaw to the left. So we ask the patient to do back, right? And then to this side and then back, yeah? That is, uh, those are called border movements that we do, yeah? Open, close, forward, backward, medial tuition right, medial tuition left. And then we ask the patient and everything we do, we do it at least three times. And we do it free and then we do it guided. Uh, free meaning, um, we just say come forward, backward. That is free, forward, backward. And then guided meaning sometimes the muscles um, are interfering with the jaw movement. So we guide the mandible and ask the patient to come forward, backward or open, close. So we guide the mandible. So we have guided movements. So same border movements, we do it guided. And then um, we have other function movements like we talked about mastication. So we put a small piece of apple in the mouth. We have it standardized. So every patient uh, gets an apple. They don't get any other fruits, right? We have small one inch small cut piece of apple um, in the mouth. So we say mastication right. So the patient choose only on the right side. And then mastication left, patient choose only on the left side. Um, and then we have bruxism. We have the patient grind their teeth in the same place without uh, moving the jaw. So there's a difference between mastication and um, uh, bruxism. So um, um, bruxism is just in one spot. It's called micro movements. Uh, and then um, what else is there? Speech. So we say, oh, count backwards from uh, 60 to uh, 50. So we have three. We count backwards from 80 to 70, 70 to 60, 60 to 50. So we get uh, the tracings. When the patient are talking, uh, we have the tracings. We record the tracing. Then swallowing. We have, we pour a little bit of water in the mouth and then we ask the patient to swallow. So every single time we are doing this, uh, the, the starting point is always CR. So we always have to start at CR. Um, the, the computer guides us. If the patient is not in CR, then um, if you see one of the graphs, let me go to. So if you see, it, we have to start, when we first start, this is the point we have to start from. If the patient is not starting from that point, then the patient is not in CR. So we have to guide the patient back to CR before any movement is done. So uh, we, it, it takes a little time to make sure the patient is back in CR and then we, we start working. Yeah, did it answer the question? Yeah, Dr. Dinesh, your question is answered. Yeah, I hope so. Any other question, please uh, ask audience. And some orthodontists are also here, like uh, Dr. Pavitranan, head of the department. Oh, wonderful. Ortho. Um, well, I have a question. Can you please ask? Dr. Chetan, this, this is Dr. Chetan Anandi, one of our yep. senior members in the fraternity. Yeah. Ma'am, I have uh, very two simple questions. One is, uh, you said it's a case of internal derangement. Right. So how did your condylography help in arriving at that particular uh, diagnosis is the first question and the second question is once your treatment plan once you got your treatment plan did you kind of trial run to check whether the treatment plan what you are derived is going to work do you, do we need to check or is there a method to check i mean how did you proceed with the treatment uh, I mean, the patient is symptom free, like basically they're not breaking anything uh, and they don't have any pain. So if they don't have, because most of these patients who come, they have pain and we want to relieve them of symptoms. So if you see that he had um, headache, uh, you know, muscle pain, a knee pain, a lot of other pains that he had. So basically we want them to be pain free. So what we believe is, it's like a marionette. 
our head, uh, our jaw joint is the first joint in our body and it is like a marionette. If the head is not in the right position, all our other joint will not be in the right position. That's what we believe in. So once we put the head in the right position, the condyl, the TMJ in the right position, all the other joints will align themselves like a marionette. So once they are pain-free, that's what we're looking at, right? That's the second question. The first question you talk about is how do you know there is internal derangement? The internal derangement, I don't know whether he has internal derangement, uh, but we, we say deranged position, not internal derangement. There, what I talked about over there was um, the DRP is deranged reference position. De deranged reference position, meaning deranged CR. The, they are not, it's not the CR. Usually if the, when you are um, restoring, you want to restore in a CR. That's what we are thought about, right? Like we don't restore in the CR if the CR is not in the right position. So that's the deranged RP, meaning the, uh, they are not in the right position. So we unload the joint, put the joint in a position where um, the joint can adapt and get better. Oh, but, uh, thank you. I, I mean, for this particular patient, did they trial run the treatment? Yes, uh, yes, that's what they did, right? I mean, if you saw him, there was verticalization. They did new overlays and crowns on him. So this was the first, when we first started, this is what was done at first. And then uh, they did the ortho. The ortho run was like for 16 months. So he didn't have any pain. He was feeling a lot better. That's when, when he felt a lot better with no um, pain and symptoms. Then from here, they had definitive treatment after that. So they did again wax up. They did try, uh, they um, put the crowns back again. You see this? At, for this was the initial therapy was this. So this was the initial therapy that was done for him. And without no symptoms, when he felt better, then they, um, they did a final treatment for him. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was uh, nice listening to you, doctor. Uh, quite informative. Something new, nice than the conventional treatments that we generally uh, Thank use. You. Thanks a lot for your time. Of course, thank you. So you can see how predictive, I mean, we help a lot of TMJ patients over here uh, with, with this uh, treatments, right? I mean, like, I mean, just by uh, changing the curve of Wilson, giving proper anterior guidance and good posterior support and changing the occlusal plane, um, you know, um, once the jaw is in the right, the TMJ is in the right position, it adapts. We had patients with really thin, 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 thin condyle. And after the treatment, the condyle, I could actually see the shape of the condyle coming after like three years. So, and no surgery, you know, those were the patients who said, oh, you need surgery. But, you know, think about having, uh, you know, if it was me, do I really want to have, a, you know, a ball and socket with metal in, in my jaw, you know? So um, that's when I started uh, like, okay, let me, let me learn about this and more holistic way of treating patients. Thank you so much. That is a best word for a holistic way of treating. treating Especially yeah. when we think about occlusion, we see the teeth, but you are seeing directly the condyles through the movements. So right. it's uh, wonderful. One more question is there from uh, Dr. Gandhra Chetty. Okay. Uh, I have a doubt regarding the usage of condylography in completely edentulous patients. I think it means for uh, removable denture. Right. Um, for that, we have a separate clutch. You know, the clutch we have for attaching the lower uh, teeth, uh, we have a clutch for uh, using it on edentulous patient that uh, it can attach to the gum of the patient. There's a separate clutch and condylography can be done on those patients. So basically we are looking, we don't have to do all the, um, moments like we did for uh, this. Um, uh, it only border moments can be done. Border moments is open, close, forward, uh, protrusion, retrusion, meditrusion, right, meditrusion, left. That is enough 
to give you the um, sagittal condylar inclination. Once we get the sagittal condylar inclination, then you can set up the denture. You can get, you can change, I mean, the occlusal plane, we can change it anyway. So then you can use that to give anterior guidance and canine guidance for the patient. And uh, we have a separate way of doing uh, dentures. I don't do the dentures that way, but Dr. Slavicek, with this technique, he has a separate way uh, of doing dentures. I don't do a lot of dentures. So, um, you know, uh, I'm, I do a lot of ortho, so I don't do a lot of dentures. But doc, if you go and read uh, Dr. Slavicek's, he has a separate book for um, uh, complete dentures using this technique. Okay, thank you. Any other, any more questions? There are no more questions. Uh, I just share the certificate from our side, a token of appreciation for your time and uh, valuable presentation. Thank you. Can you see this? Can you see the screen? And I'll, I have to stop sharing, yeah. I think. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Anandi. I really appreciate you giving me the opportunity. It's actually a pleasure is last to host you and uh, learn more from you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Thank you. I really wish I saw some more, madam, though, but I cannot. Yeah, actually, I think she's busy, yeah. Okay, no problem. Maybe she just... I think uh... many people are thanking. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? And you said Ashraf was here. He and yeah, Dr. Nasser is here. Yeah. Yeah, Dr. Nasser, yeah, I'm seeing it now. I, I just Dr. Nasser, can you put on hey, your sir. video? Dr. Anandi would like to see you. <laughs> right. I think people are a little shy. Hi. Hi, madam. Good to see you. I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, how are you? Uh, yeah, it is very, very nice. Means you have put a lot of training for this uh, topic. Manikram. Means you underwent some course for this. Yes, uh, yes. You are, quite uh, you are quite proficient with um, uh, the subject as much as the professor on this. So, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Yeah, congratulations. Well, I can't compare myself to you. You are a guru, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so happy for you. <laughs> yeah, thank you, madam. Thank you to see you. I yeah. mean, with all with, for the COVID, all of the coverings <laughs> and stuff, right? <laughs> old age, no. Um, uh, old age, madam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really nice to see you, madam. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, always your blessings will be for us so we can go <laughs> more higher yeah. and higher, right? <laughs> Anandina, I mean, the, earlier at least you were wearing specs. Yeah, I mean, I don't wear specs, but if, like you said, old age, I have to wear. Okay, so happy for you. Say hi to ah, the yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All the best. Do well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, madam. And participants, please. Uh, the I'm so link happy that I won't sleep today. <laughs> okay, thanks. Participants, right. please fill in the Google no, link no, for no. your certificates. You can share it once more. <laughs> Somebody's talking. Uh, one more question is there. Would you like to yeah. take it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, is there a contraindication for condylography? Uh, I mean, I don't work with really old people or little kids, so I haven't had any any contraindication. I mean, like, uh, I heard that, you know, because it's... Uh, um, the, I know Dr. Manohar, you were talking about it last time to remember that you yeah, said yeah. that like a magnetic thing which has pacemaker, people who have pacemaker, right? Um, yeah, I was asking as a doubt. Right. So other than that, I really don't see. But the thing is, this is huge. 
so if you put it on little kids, it's kind of really hard for the little kids. So they have a different type of condylar graft for little kids. It, it has only um, like an eyeglass that you can put it on the little kids and just get, you won't be able to get all the numbers, but at least you'll be able to get the bottom movements uh, for the little kids. They do have a smaller version. And of course, if they have a headache or, you know, if they have so much problems, then we'll have to do it in two stages, right? If they have so much pain and you, you, it takes like at least two hours for us to finish the whole thing from start to finish. So if the patient can't take it, if the head is hurting, even normal people, uh, I mean, when I had mine done, by the end, I just didn't want to do anything else. I just wanted to take a tablet and go to bed, you know? Uh, I do have some deranged joints, so <laughs> you know. So, um, but uh, when people really have symptoms, it, it it does hurt. So we probably have to break it in two times, or we just give the small break to them, and then we continue doing uh, the condylar graft. Okay. But other than that, I really don't see any anything else. I think Dr. Shruti's question is answered. If there are no more questions, uh, I think we can end up, end the session. All right. Again, a thanks note to I, Dr. Anandi. Yeah. There are no words to explain. Like, in spite of your busy schedule, I know how busy you are. You have been practicing and also teaching also. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> in spite of that, you have used your time to uh, be with us. Thanks well, a lot. You are very persistent, Manohar. You are very persistent. <laughs> I was after you for two months, I think. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Very <laughs> but uh, we are lucky yeah. to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good day, everyone. Good yeah. day. Have a Stay good day. Safe. Have a good day to everybody. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.